What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm gonna address a few things. First of all, if you've never heard of keyloggers or keyboard recording, I'm gonna show you how that works and how you can do it. Second of all, since I already made a video about this topic three years ago, I'm gonna go over some of the most frequent questions from that video and I'm gonna answer them. So somewhat of a Q&A regarding that video and the first version of my keylogger. And third, I'm going to be releasing a new version of my Keylogger program, the Keylogger 2.0, which is available to buy and download right now on my Itch.io page. The link is in the description. So later on in this video, I will show you how the new Keylogger works, what are the new features, where you can find it, all that good stuff. So yeah, if you're interested in a specific part of this video, the timestamps are available below, so you can skip ahead. Or if you want, you can listen to the whole video, which will be much appreciated. Alright, let's get started with the first thing on the list. How can you record your keyboard? Well, for that, you need a keylogger. Now, there are some hardware keyloggers that look like a normal USB stick. You just plug them in and they record everything you type on the keyboard and the data is stored on the USB. However, in this video, we're going to focus on software keyloggers. They look something like this. This is the first version of my keylogger, and I can demonstrate how it works by opening another app like Notepad and typing something. You can see that all the text is recorded, and later on I can export it in many different ways. I should note that this works on every app you use on your computer, so I can also open my browser and maybe log into a website. You can see that both my email and password are recorded in the keylogger in the form of plain text. This is the primary use of keyloggers, recording confidential information like emails, passwords, etc. I should also note that the keylogger can work completely hidden in the background. If I minimize it and choose the option to hide the icon in the bottom right, the keylogger will still work, but it won't be visible at all. Keyloggers have other use cases as well. Sometimes companies use it to monitor what their work computers are being used for, or maybe a parent who wants to control what their kid is doing on the internet, things like that. So that is the basic usage of a keylogger. I made a video about it back in 2018, and turns out people had a lot of questions about it. So let's move on to the next section of this video, the Q&A. The first question is, is this a virus? My browser doesn't let me download it. And the answer is no, this is not a virus. But unfortunately, because of the nature of some of the features that the keylogger has, it gets flagged as a virus by most browsers and antivirus software, like, for example, Windows Defender. The funny thing is, if I want to download my own keylogger right now, it won't let me. And as you can see, it says virus detected even though I'm the one who made it and uploaded it to Itch.io. So how can you solve this problem? Well, if you're using Windows 10, you can click on your Start menu and type in Virus. Click on the first thing and this will open your Windows security. Click on Manage Settings and from there you can disable your real-time protection. This will disable your Windows Defender not only for the keylogger, but for everything else, so you should be careful while doing this. A better solution would be to keep using the Defender, but only allow the keylogger. You can do this by going one step back and finding the keylogger among the current threats. If you're not sure which one it is, click on See Details and check where the file is located. Once you find it, click on Allow on Device and then Start Actions. When you're done with this, you can go back to your browser and try downloading the keylogger again. This time the download should work. This is called whitelisting a program. Whenever you're absolutely sure that an app is safe to use, you can add it to the whitelist in your antivirus software. But if you don't want to do this, I have great news for you. In my new keylogger program, the Keylogger 2.0, which I will talk about later on in this video, 
you don't have to do any of this and you can normally download it without allowing it in your antivirus. Stay tuned for that later on. The second question is, is this a scam? And the answer is, again, no, this is not a scam. When you download the keylogger, you will get exactly what you see in this video. There's no funny stuff happening in the background, there's no malware, nothing like that. But I understand why you would be worried. And honestly, you should be. When I first discovered keyloggers, I tried finding one that I can use and pretty much everything that I found was a virus. Everything I downloaded tried to scam me. So you should be very careful with what you download. So how can you be 100% sure that I'm not scamming you as well? Well, one solution is to try using the keylogger on another computer, where even if something bad happens, you don't mind it because it's not your computer. For this, you can use virtual machines. If you don't know what that is, basically you can use a program to install another operating system within your computer. This will simulate another machine working completely independently on your computer. So kind of like having another physical computer next to you. So once you have that, you can use that computer for testing things that are potentially unsafe. You can mess around with all kinds of stuff and even if you completely break the system, you can just delete it and install another one. Anyway, for virtual machines, I use Oracle's VirtualBox. If you want to test my keylogger on it and see if something bad happens, I encourage you to do so. You'll first need to install VirtualBox, the link is in the description. Then you'll need to install Windows on it, and then you're good to go. You can also save this virtual machine for later, in case you have some other software you want to test out before using it on your own PC. The next question is, does it work with Windows login password? And the answer is no, it doesn't work. You can't record someone's Windows login password when they start up their PC. First of all, Windows security is smart enough not to allow something like this to happen. And second of all, when you turn on your PC and you're asked to type in the password, at that moment, all the apps on your PC haven't started yet. It's only after you type in the password, that's when your system starts up and all the apps, including the keylogger, will start working. So no, this is not possible and never will be. And the last question is, does it work on iOS or Linux? Unfortunately, no, the keylogger is only available for Windows. I've never worked on software for Linux or iOS and I don't plan on doing so. Maybe if a lot of people are interested in it, I might look into it, but not for now. All right, those were some of the most common questions on my old video. Now on to the most exciting part of this video, the release of the new Keylogger 2.0. I published the new Keylogger on the 15th of July 2021 and it's available to buy right now on my itch.io page. Check the first link in the description. On this page you can see some information about the program, some screenshots, you can read about the new features and all that good stuff. But most importantly, you can download it for 5 US dollars, which is, in my opinion, a fair price for what you're getting. As I mentioned earlier, when you download this new version, it will not get flagged as a virus. This is already a big change from the previous version. However, you will still get this warning from Windows, saying that you downloaded some potentially unwanted software. This is just because the keylogger was released by an unknown publisher, aka myself, and it isn't something that is widely known and accepted. If you want, you can click on this warning and say that you allow it on this device. Or you can just ignore it. It's up to you. Anyway, let's go ahead and open it. As you can see, the keylogger has a brand new user interface with this purple theme and the menu on the left side, which will hopefully make for a much better user experience than the previous version. Just to demonstrate that it works, I'm gonna open a few different apps and type some stuff. Everything is being recorded in this big text box. It works with regular English letters as well as any other alphabet. Now, by default, it doesn't record special keys like backspace or escape, but you can change that in the settings. 
At the beginning of each recording, you can see a timestamp of when the keyboard recording started. If you prefer not to have this, you can also change it in the settings. You can search through the recording and find what you're looking for. You can stop the recording at any time, or you can clear the log and start over. You can export the recording onto a text file by clicking here. It takes you to another screen. As you can see in the menu, there are six screens to go through. The second one lets you export the text file locally. You can do a quick export to the default location, which is your documents folder. Here's the file and all the content. You can choose where you want to save the file and you can also open the folder containing all the log files. On this card you can see some export details regarding your last recording, like time passed since the beginning, the number of lines, characters, etc. Down here you can see a list of your previous logs from this session and you can double click to open them. Let's move on to the email section. This is a new feature that lets you send recordings of your keyboard to your email. As you can see, I have some text recorded here and now I'm going to type in my email address. And press send. In a few seconds, I will receive an email containing a timestamp of the recording as well as the text. You can also set up periodic email reports and you can choose how frequent they are, but we'll see that later on in the settings. Next up is the FTP section. This is something that was available in the previous version as well. You can upload the keyboard recording reports to your FTP server. On the right side, you can see some information about how you should specify the FTP host address, and I suggest that you read it before uploading. I have a test FTP server, and I'm using the FileZilla client app, so now I will paste in the info for my server. As you can see, there are no logs in the folder so far. And after I click on Upload, I will refresh. And there it is. I can download it if I want and check if it matches. And it does. This is a good option if you want to have your keyboard recording available online, so you can access it from anywhere. Next up is the settings screen. This version of the Keylogger has a lot more settings than the previous one, and I plan to add even more over time. These are the default settings, but you can change anything by simply switching it on or off. You can choose to start the Keylogger with Windows, you can start it minimized, you can choose to show or hide the icon in the bottom right, you can choose to display confirmation messages that will warn you when you want to delete something that hasn't been saved yet. In case you want to hide your keylogger icon, you can choose to have a keyboard shortcut that will make it visible again. You can choose your default export location. You can choose to export logs every X minutes. You can go from 5 to 360 minutes, which is 6 hours. You can also capture screenshots with every report. I will turn this on for now and we'll check back if it works in 5 minutes. You can send emails every X hours. Now in order to use the setting you need to go to the email section first and save your email address there. Send a test email to see if it works and then you can go back to the settings and choose how often you want to receive emails. You can choose whether you want to record timestamps at the beginning and the end of your recording. You can record special keys like backspace and escape. And also you can choose if you want to clean up your logs before exporting them. This will get rid of empty lines and spaces in the reports and will make the reports more readable. Finally, you can save the settings and you can reset them to default values. And the last screen is the About section, where you can read some info about the version, release date, app's website, things like that.
All right, it's been about 15 minutes now, and earlier I chose the setting to export logs every five minutes. So when I go to my documents folder, I expect to see three logs. Here they are. And here are the screenshots as well. So that's pretty much it for my new keylogger. If you have any questions or maybe suggestions for a new feature, make sure to leave them on my Itch.io page or in the comments here on YouTube. I'm very active here and I reply to most of the comments. Now before I end the video, I want to give a thank you to the people who bought the first version of my keylogger and left positive feedback in the YouTube comments. To an aspiring developer like myself, it means a lot and it inspired me to work on this new version. Finally, thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for more content coming soon. See you in the next one.